Hi there, YouTube. Fire Lynn here, and it's wonderful to see you guys. Yes, we are filming in the witchy room. I just finished setting up my Samhain altar. I have uploaded that in case you haven't seen it. Um, I am going for two videos today because I promised them to you guys on Friday and then failed to come through because I fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> Now, this is going to be a general favorites video, but I'm going to try and keep out the material. However, that said, this will be the one material thing I share with you guys because it tickles me. Um, humans aren't real, and then it's got the little gray. But the whole reason I bought this shirt from Five Below is not just because of the little gray or the little phrase, which both are adorable, by the way. It's because of this font. Does anybody else remember Ancient Aliens? My dad and I would watch that together all the time. Like, just loved watching it. Um, dad and I are very close. And one of our big bonding things when I lived at home was watching paranormal shows together. Uh, paranormal, I want to say paranormal activity, which I do like those movies as terrible as they can be. Um, but yes, paranormal state. We watched a whole lot of, we watched a whole lot of my ghost story, my celebrity ghost story, um, a haunting. We watched ghost hunters, ghost adventures. I'm trying to remember what the British one was called. In any case, we pretty much watched them all. If it was on TV, we would watch it. I remember we even went ahead and got Biography Channel strictly because they have a lot of ghost shows or they did at the time. I no longer have cable. I have not had cable for 10 years. Um, the internet's all I really need. <laughs> Even if I want to watch those shows, I can watch a good chunk of them on Netflix, or we also have Amazon Prime you can watch stuff on. So we are very big into that whole thing. <laughs> Still in my house. So that will count as a favorite as well. Um, special mention goes to BuzzFeed Unsolved. Oh, excuse me. BuzzFeed Unsolved is brilliant. If you're trying to find it and you have not watched it yet, I know the internet's kind of a stir about it at the moment, but it is great. It is so worth watching. Um, BuzzFeed Unsolved runs through BuzzFeed Blue. So I don't know if you're going to want to subscribe just to watch Unsolved because they have the paranormal supernatural side of things and then they have the more grounded in reality things like D.B. Cooper, uh, they just recently in their last season did the JFK assassination, but they also have murder mysteries like the Kitty Cabin murders. Um, I'm trying to remember the names of all of them, but they did a lot of those. I believe they're on season four or five. I could be wrong, but TJ and I have found them fabulously entertaining uh, not only that, but while they do, you know, there is humor. There's a lot of joking around and so on. If you watch their voodoo episode, it is probably the most respectful I've ever seen a show centered around the unknown and the unsolved and so on. I have never seen witchcraft, in particular voodoo, treated with such respect before. Um, of course there were jokes. I mean, the lady, they were walking through a certain building. Um, she was a voodoo priestess. Ah, my words are all mixed up. She is a voodoo priestess and she was giving them a tour of one of the buildings in New Orleans. But even though she was joking around and they were joking around, like the craft was very respectfully shown. Um, there was a lot of I don't know how to describe it, but it was just very heartfelt and I didn't feel watching it that they were going out of their way to scandalize things or to make, make, you know, television basically <laughs> like they were, but not in a way that devalued what was happening around them. Um, even the skeptic who's on the show, even Shane was like really understanding and right there for the entire thing like gave his respect and for me that's all I ask like if you don't believe in it fine but at least offer your respect so yes BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed Unsolved is a favorite of the month 
actually the last few months, <laughs> as soon as I found it and I watched it by myself, I'm like, I got to show this to TJ. And he loves it too. So yay, score. Um, also, I don't know how many of you are into anime. If you have not watched Sword Art Online Abridged here on YouTube, I highly recommend it. I didn't really care for the show itself. TJ was really invested, but the abridged just kind of tickled my fancy. Um, let's see. What else can I say? Well, for video games, again, I'll keep this brief because I know a lot of people who follow me aren't video gamers, but it has just been a wonderful time for trailers right now. I'm looking forward to Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm looking forward to just there's so many good horror games um i'll last two was kind of a disappointment for me in terms of horror i loved the first outlast but the second outlast like it just kind of lost me i wasn't invested in it i didn't care about the main character or his wife or any of the events happening to them it's just kind of like mm, i think resident evil 7 did the you know backwoods horror a little bit better <laughs> At the very least, like, even though it's Resident Evil, it was far less convoluted, and you could actually follow the storyline quite well. Um, Evil Within 2 came out, and I have not, I'm not planning on buying it. I didn't buy the first Evil Within, but I am curious to see a Let's Play of it. But I always, when it comes to horror Let's Plays, wait until they're completely online. You know, you got a full set, and I just sit and watch it like you would a horror movie. Um, as for horror movies, I haven't really, I had no desire to go see It. I didn't really care for the original. I don't think I'd care for the reboot sequel. I don't know. I heard it's both a reboot and a sequel at the same time. Like it still has Pennywise's character in it. Um, but it's like the child of Pennywise. I don't know. Clowns just, they don't scare me, but they also because they don't scare me, they don't make compelling horror movies. Like, I didn't really give two shits about what was going on with the clowns. Um, which is also why I haven't really watched American Horror Story. Might surprise you guys, but I'm not an American Horror Story person. Just, I have a copy of Coven, and it's still in shrink wrap, because a friend sent it to me, and I just haven't watched it. Sorry, Moe. Um... But this is not an unfavorites video, this is a favorites video. But I have been enjoying horror, is my point. Um, even when I don't watch stuff, I'm excited when a new horror movie comes out. I'm just thrilled to pieces. And I am super, super excited for The Shape of Water that's going to be coming out, or has just come out. I don't know. But I'm really excited to watch that. As, and I'm going to butcher his name, and I'm sorry, I know how it's pronounced. But I mix up my words all the time. But Guillermo de to del Toro, there we go, <laughs> is the director. And I love monsters. I love the really cheesy horror, like monster horror movies that aren't scaring anybody anymore. Um, I like hammer horror. I like, I, I just like horror and I like monsters and I like seeing what people do with them. You know, I loved the Wolfman in, I believe it was, was it 2010? I know it was like the, uh, I don't want to say reboot. What am I trying to say? It was the more modern telling of it. I loved that movie. A lot of people don't. I don't care. I loved the Wolfman. I thought it was great. Um, I thought the actors were all compelling. I mean... It's got Hannibal Lecter in it. How can you, how can you not? <laughs> so I love that movie. Um, I recently watched The Wicker Man. For me, that's more of, and I mean the 1973 version. I do not mean the Nicolas Cage version. Like, I mean the one where Sir Christopher Lee and that being baritone. I can't even get close to how deep his voice is because I refuse to believe that he's dead. I think he's in a hundred year slumber. <laughs> But that, The Wicker Man, the original, is more of a springtime horror flick for me. Um, but I decided to watch it again anyway, because why not? <laughs> and TJ and I have been watching a lot of films through Netflix. Um, we watched The Wizards 
from, I think it's 1977 or 1979. I'm very sorry for getting the date wrong on that. But The Wizards, um, not sure if I recommend it, but it was a fun watch. TJ and I had a great time with it. <laughs> uh, and I do think that it brings around a message again of some of the things we're facing right now. I'm not going to spoil it all for you. Um, if you like the animation ghetto, I mean, I have a soft spot for the animation ghetto, and I can't explain to anyone why. Like, maybe it's the camp value that's pushing it through for me. But, like, I like Watership Down. Um, I have not watched the counterpart to that, by the way. Um, Philidae, I like that film a whole lot. It's an animated film, but do not show it to your children. <laughs> Do not. There's some real adult things going on in that movie. It's a foreign film. I want to say it's German or French. I'm not sure, but it does have an English dub if you're interested. Um, I like Philidae. I like, I said, Watership Down is one of my favorite movies because that, I don't know, it's just something about the storytelling. Like, I haven't read the book, but the storytelling in the movie is very unusual and it keeps you on edge the whole time. Hell, I'd count that as a horror movie right there. Um, but yeah, I like the animation ghetto, so we had a lot of fun with the wizards. I'm trying to think of what else I've been watching that is worth noting, because I, I rewatch a lot of my favorites. Like, last night we just watched Howl's Moving Castle by Studio Ghibli, which, by the way, the book is better, but I don't care. The, the movie is eye candy. And it's still a sweet story, even if it's not quite the story that the book was. Um, I'm fine with that and adaptations. The only thing that gets me mad is going back to a haunting, like when they screw up ghosts and make them malevolent when they weren't in the original telling. It's like, why? They're already past. Like, can you be nice to them a little bit? Um, speaking of spirits. Our house is full of some bumps, some creaks, some groans. Um, not all of them paranormal. I really need to talk to my landlord about some things. Um, but there are things that have happened. Mostly, like, I keep hearing a chime, like a, a ding, like a service bell. Now, we do own a service bell, but it's in the kitchen in a cupboard that the cats can't access. And there's nothing else in there. And that's not even where the sound is coming from to begin with. It's coming from, like, our hallway right by the actual bedroom, um, right outside the door, just here, ding! And then there's nothing. I've gone to investigate it. My cats react to it whenever it happens. Like, they immediately sit up and, you know, the ears are up and kind of look around. And I'll get out of bed and go and see if there's anything and there's nothing. There's just kind of, ding! Um... And right now I can hear the cats playing. But it's just been very strange in that aspect. But overall, it's been kind of quiet this Samhain season. Um, not a whole lot going on. Might be because I have been seeing Jack Lee Connors on a regular basis. I've been going to his grave and paying respects. I've been leaving a dime, which is kind of an interesting story. So I'm going to go aside and say... Um, leaving money on graves has been a very common thing in a lot of cultures, still is today. Um, when I go to graveyards, I tend to see a lot of coinage resting on graves, not just those in military, but those of family as well, you know, civilians. And when I first started going to Jack Lee Connor's grave, um, I would bring whiskey or milk or just some kind of beverage, but that started to become more cumbersome. Like it was I like to walk there rather than drive there if I can. Um, it's just a short walk. It's right by the schools, which are less than a mile from where I live. It's about a half mile. Um, so I just walk usually. But when I would be carrying a drink, like I was afraid of spilling it, even if I had it in a bottle or something, I was scared of it like flipping over in my bag and spilling all over everything. So I was like, okay, we need we need to find something else that we can offer. And so I started leaving dimes. And dimes for me have always been a big part of my practice anyway. I leave them for trees. 
um, as offerings when I gather branches and other fallen debris, um, even when I just chat with a tree or any other kind of, sorry, the sunlight is driving my eyes nuts. Um, but I will usually leave a token of some sort, and usually it's a dime. Um, so I've been leaving dimes on Jacqueline Connor's grave for quite a few years now, and I decided to research for my grimoire um, why people leave coins at graves in particular, and one, it's something that dates back as far back as the Greek and Roman times um, in Western culture, at least. I know paper money is a very big thing in Eastern cultures, but here, like, coins in particular are usually left. Um, and, of course, they would place the coins on the eyes or in the mouth as payment to cross the river Styx. Um, but in more recent history, the Vietnam War in particular, which Jack Lee Connor served and died in, um, he was put to rest as a lieutenant. Um, I'm afraid I'm not very well versed in ranks or units or any of that. Um, I personally am not of the military, neither of my parents are. I have a couple relatives, like I have an uncle. I've got, you know, a, a married in aunt who have served in the military, but they are not very close family to me, so I don't know how any of that works. Um, in any case, during the Vietnam War, the act of leaving coins came right back into favor because a lot of times it was easier to pay your respects to a fallen soldier by leaving a denomination of coin rather than risk going over to give your respects to his family and an argument breaking out because the Vietnam War, or as Vietnam calls it, the American War, was very tumultuous. Not everybody felt like it was necessary. A lot of people felt that it was overreaching America's power. Um, still, other people were like, look, your country asks you to serve. You should serve regardless. And, you know, a lot of arguments that we still have today were roaring back then. And so a lot of times, if you went to a grave, you would leave a bit of coin. Now, for civilians, they would leave a penny. For people who attended boot camp with the deceased, they would leave a nickel. Those who served would leave a dime. And those who saw um, the soldier at their time of death would leave a quarter. Now, if you'll recall, and this is a very old video, so it's okay if you don't. Um, quick recap, when I worked at a gas station, there was a wrong number phone call. And when I told the gentleman who where I was, you know, oh, you called the Bad Axe location. He said, Bad Axe, and asked me about the cemetery here in Bad Axe. And if I could go and pay his war buddy, hello, Giggle. Yes, look, you're on camera. <laughs> but yes, he asked if I could pay his war buddy a visit and, you know, pay his respects because he's not, he wasn't able to come up here anymore. He was an elderly man. Um, I mean, you could hear it in his voice. And he didn't tell me, you know, where, where they served together, what war. He told me none of this didn't even tell me his name. He just told me Jack Lee Connors. And I said, yes, I can go and find him. And I did. Um, and so like leaving a dime, it just, it like struck a chord. Like, you know, in your heart, it's not that it's tense out of fear, but it's just like it gets a little stark because you see the synchronicities coming together and all these coincidences coming together. And you're like, oh my goodness. So for me, it felt very much like well, I left a dime because when this journey started, I was leaving. Yes, get your lovely tail out of the way, please. Thank you. <laughs> I was leaving a dime. And the gentleman who had brought Jack Lee Connors to my attention had served with him. <laughs> so that was interesting. And I did enjoy making a page dedicated to that whole situation to... Jack Lee Connors. Which brings me to, I have been really enjoying working on my grimoire. I know I stalled out this summer, but with the days getting colder and wetter, although today we've been blessed with sunshine. Sorry, 
just be a little bit more and a little bit better all weekend. Um, but with the seasons changing, and today it's beautiful, and I am going to take advantage of that. I am going to take a walk after I finish this video. But it's been gloomy, it's been wet, it's been gross. So, perfect time for crafting. That said, um, not this past weekend, but the first weekend of October, we did all the things. <laughs> we went to the pumpkin festival on Friday. We went to the Sleeper State Park where my mom works during the summer all the way up until October. Um, they have a cute Halloween, they call it Harvest Days, but there is trick-or-treating and there is a Halloween theme. Like we've got a sponsored hay ride that brings like everybody through. Um, we took my friend and her adopted brother, um, recently adopted, so congrats to them. We took my friend Sheila and her little brother Noah and we took them up to Sleeper with us and he got to go trick-or-treating. It isn't his first trick-or-treat, he's three. But it was definitely him more engaged than he was last year. Like last year, he didn't really care. This year, that was the most fun I've had trick-or-treating in a long time. Because yes, I'm an adult, but I still go trick-or-treating. <laughs> Just, I, I will go with anybody. Like if they have kids, I am like down to go. Like I'm down to take them. But... <laughs> We took Noah, and it was just it was so adorable because, like, you know how sometimes you'll go and get the candy and something will jump out at you? Well, this happened to him once, and he was bound and bent. It was not going to happen again. Like, he didn't scream or cry. He just kind of, you know, jumped back, startled, and then his little brow furrowed. So after this horror had happened, um, the next place we went to also had a little standing figure. It was, um... I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Miss Sunshine series. I don't know. But it was one of the little characters from that. And he walks right up to it and, like, two fingers just pokes it and, like, stares at it for a minute, nods to himself, and then goes and gets candy. Like, he was just making sure that he was not going to get spooked again. And he, he was a trooper. He went... We had to have walked at least a mile because, like, it's a big park. So, you know, you're going, you're weaving, going through the rows, doing your trick-or-treat thing. And for being three and not having a nap that day, he was just on fire. He was just going for it. So that was a whole lot of fun. Um, we did go this past weekend. They do it the first two weekends of October. But sadly, the weather was really, really crappy, like cold, just downpour, rain the entire day, the wind picked up. So we stayed pretty much halfway through trick-or-treating and I'm like, I want to stay and like help pass out candy, but I'm literally shivering, my lips were turning blue, and I was not wearing lipstick. <laughs> and it was just it was too too cold for us. So TJ and I came back home. Um but still it was wonderful seeing all those kids despite the rain despite the cold, um, just going and trucking and doing their thing and getting all the goodies. <laughs> it was really nice and it brought me back to my nostalgia for Halloween. Because as soon as I was five, I remember my first Halloween that I can remember. I was dressed up as Flower the Skunk from Bambi because Bambi was my ultimate favorite Disney movie. And it is now banned from Grandpa and Grandma's house because I watched it so much. Oops. <laughs> but I was Flower from Bambi, and I still distinctly remember this day getting very upset at people thinking I was a black cat. Because, no, does a black cat have stripes? I don't think so. <laughs> and I remember turning around to one of the teachers who lives in town and being like, I'm a skunk. <laughs> so that is a wonderful memory for me and actually mom does have that costume dressed up in her little Bambi set that she made like one was my costume yes but she made Thumper and she made Mr. Owl and she's working on making Bambi himself so she has that set up for the little ones and the harvest like they set up 
like carts with food and like baked goods and popcorn and stuff. So she's got this little Bambi set up over there and it, it's always a crowd pleaser. There's a lot of pictures taken and I'm so proud of her. She made it all herself. She cut out all the wood shapes herself. She painted them. Like she was very detailed. Like she got the exact colors, everything down to like the last line. She had it done on lock. <laughs> so Halloween to me, Samhain. I actually remember reading, um, I don't know if they have this series anymore, but it was by the people who made zoo books and a lot of other educational books for kids. Um, they had ones based on all the holidays. And I remember checking out the Halloween one all the time. And I'd never heard anybody say Samhain. So as a kid, it was Sa Sam Hain. <laughs> so even what I read to this day, Samhain, like I know what it's supposed to be, but my brain will go, Sam Hain. <laughs> No, it's not. Uh, but good, tr good try, little me. No reason to get all cynical about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's another family joke. Because I didn't, I had never heard the word uh, cynical said aloud, so I just assume it was cynical. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> sorry. Now we're just going down a rabbit hole of memories. But that's what happens when you get nostalgic for one thing. Um. Shadow work can be very dark and terrifying, but it can also bring you right back to when you were younger and bring you back to a more optimistic mental state. Um, so yeah, Samhain and Halloween have a very dear and special place in my heart. Um, we have not done as much as we wanted to, as much as we usually do in October, but with all the medical bills that we're trying to pay off, we're just trying to be responsible and get that all tight tucked away so that we can enjoy the other holidays with our families. That said, that doesn't mean that we haven't been doing small things at home, such as, you know, I just set up my Samhain altar today. Um, I have right now mulled cider being warmed in the slow cooker. Um, if you do make it, I, I don't recommend putting a whole lot of lemons in. Pickle is plain with the Indian corn. <laughs> which is fine. Um, but if you do make a slightly citrusy apple cider, be careful with how much citrus you put in it. Ooh, I just being a little snoop today. Aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, you're being a little drama queen. That's you. Oh, you are not pleased to see yourself. There you go. <laughs> but we have been doing little things. Like I said, we've been watching a lot of ghost shows and a lot of horror. Like, I call them horror movies. Horror is subjective. Um, playing a lot of games together. Just enjoying togetherness. Enjoying the fact that we can be together um, with our schedules the way they are. We always take great advantage of when we can enjoy time with just... TJ and myself. Um, I've seen a lot of family and a lot of friends this season. And that's, that's important too. You know, we get so tied up with doing all of the things and getting everything done and, you know, journeying as far as we can. And while I love travel, my sun sign is Sagittarius. So I love travel. <laughs> As much as I love travel, it's been really nice to kind of discover things closer to home again. Um, I'm even finding things in my apartment because while that's not a favorite because it's tedious and it takes forever, I um, have been sorting out the house and I've been finding things that I love, um, releasing myself from things that are ready to move on to someone else's life <laughs> and out of my apartment. Um, but I really, really been enjoying this time home, enjoying rebuilding some relationships that maybe went by the wayside with the activities of summer, because I don't have children, but I do a whole lot in the summer, because where I live, that's like the best season to get things done and to venture out and enjoy nature. Because while I believe we should enjoy all seasons, 
it's a little easier to enjoy when the sun is out, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm going to end this video here. Just wanted to have a chit chat, catch up with you guys. Hopefully all the audio works. Uh, we'll find out when I upload this. But wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a wonderful day or night. And just remember to be good to each other. Enjoy what you have. Don't get caught up on what you don't have. Because we're only here in the world for a short little while before we start all over again. All right. With that, I'm going to let you guys go. Bye-bye.